Dear modelers, in this episode I am chipping the whole model in 4 easy and fast to apply steps. We start with the model after the oil techniques have been applied. To get the chipping done we use a sponge, paint brushes, enamel wash and speckling with oils. After this chipping stage we will continue with dust and mud. Watch this episode until the end and please don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Take a sponge from the packing material and drip off a small bit. Then again tear small parts off to get a more or less random shape. It shouldn't be flat. As a color for the first layer of superficial chips I take an acrylic paint which is lighter than the base coat. I dip the sponge into the paint and dab most of it off on a kitchen paper until the sponge only leaves small traces. After I try it on a piece of paper or on a test model. I start to dab the sponge on the model, applying chips on corners and exposed surfaces. After several dabs on the same place I turn the sponge a little bit to change the pattern of the sponge chips and to create some more randomness. Don't forget to always take off some paint on the kitchen towel after you load it with paint. As you can see you can apply in a short time many small light chips and you can apply it pretty precisely depending on the size of the sponge you are using. While I'm using the sponge technique I always keep in mind don't overdo it, keep it random, can there be chips at all on the spot of the tank and that there will be more steps which will alter the superficial light chips. So after the first step, the so called sponge chipping, the model already looks much more used and weathered. But with the second step we will enhance some of the random sponge chips even more. To start the second step we'll use the same color again and a fine brush. Paint retarder and acrylic paint thinner are your friends for this step. Just prepare the color until you get a nice solution of the paint. As with the sponge chipping and other techniques, Try the consistency of the paint on a paper or a test model. Now enhance and connect the chips on the model where there is more wear. And add other shape of chips which are limited by the sponge, like for example lines. There is always a big debate if chipping occurs on real tanks and planes and how the real life colors are chipping. I find it a very artistic approach to get the plastic model chipped, but it makes the tank or aircraft much more dramatic and appealing to the eye in my opinion. When I look at the model it hasn't to depict the real life counterpart, but it has to be attractive not only by the shapes itself, but by the scratch building, the camo, the weathering and the accessories. I like the brush chipping technique to create some visual borders between panels and hatches. For example you could just paint the corners and a subtle border is now between the hatch and the turret. Or you can accentuate round shapes of the tank. Even though you can take the sponge chips as a guide, I find this step difficult to get the brush painted chips nicely done. You have to often clean your brush to get the chips as fine as possible. If you want to check out how real chipping works, visit Uncle Nine Shift's YouTube channel. He's a real artist and takes these techniques used in this video to a whole new level.
and with the superficial chipping in a light color with a sponge and brush, the first step is finished. In the second step we are creating the deeper chips, following the already created pattern by the superficial chips in the first step. I mix a dark grey color from Vallejo colors because they are very good for brush painting. Again with drying retarder and some water. Then with the same fine brush as before I fill some of the superficial chips with a dark grey color, depicting additional wear on the paint. You could also use a very dark brown steel color, but for the next step it is better to paint the chips with a dark grey. You don't have to fill in every little chip. To draw some of these fine points, I like to hold my hand with the brush in my other hand so it eliminates a little bit of the shaking and you can aim on these little dots of the chips from the first step. To do the third step I'll use an enamel rust wash or rust streaking color and again a fine brush. I especially like this Torre 20 brush from Vallejo. It is fine, can hold some paint and has a very nice tip. With the rust wash I paint over the dark grey chips from the step before. Then after letting the wash dry for several minutes I blur the edges or the whole dot with other less thinner and a clean brush. If there's too much rust red on the model, I again blur it even more until I'm happy. I'm not creating any rust streaks, I'm just enhancing the deeper chips. The fourth and last step is speckling with oil colors. I mix the shade of the first step, the superficial chips, with the oil colors. Then with a brush and a toothpick I speckle the oil color over the whole surface to create a big amount of tiny dots which represent tiny little scratches and tie the surface of the superficial chips, the deep chips and the rusted deep chips a little bit more together. The good thing about the oil colors is that you can wipe them away with odorless thinner if you aren't happy. Before I speckle the oil color onto the model I try it like always first on a paper or a test model until I got the right consistency of the color and the right brush. As you can see these four steps get your model absolutely chipped in a very short time. And you don't have to create the chips. The sponge chipping creates random chips you only decide where to put them. The other three steps are a fun thing to do. Like I mentioned before, the two things I keep in mind over the whole chipping procedure is not overdoing it and especially while sponge chipping, where would real life chipping occur on the tank if there's chipping at all. Now the model is ready for mud and dust, I hope you enjoyed this video, most important don't forget to subscribe to tune in to my weekly updates and leave a like or a dislike with some feedback. So enjoy your time at your modeling bench and tune in to the next episode.